Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on into the studio. That's right, we're throwing tonight. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and this is Clay Share Live every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. We have a fun tutorial for you all. Now, we're gonna do something we haven't done in a while, and that would be throwing. Uh, mostly I'm hand building, and that's because all of my production equipment and all my cameras and lighting are stationed at the hand building area, and that's on the other side of the studio and it's really difficult to move everything to this side of the room. It takes like half a day to do that. So we don't do a lot of throwing lives because it's a lot of work to get set up, but we're doing two tonight. We're doing Clayshare Live right now. We're gonna make three different cup or mug shapes, your choice. These could be cups, these could be mugs, they could be vases, they could be lots of things. Just gonna show you how to get the shapes. What you do with them is entirely up to you. Um, and then after this, during prime time, which is the private broadcast for premium members of Clayshare, we're making these over here. We're going to be making some wheel thrown bowls that we're then going to alter Aww. and turn them into little hearts. Now I do have a class on altering bowls and I have a lot of classes on wheel throwing and throwing mugs and hand building mugs. So if you're a hand builder, you know, you can check out the hand building, but you might enjoy the fun of throwing. It's always it's always fun, I think, to watch someone throw. So these are the three shapes we're gonna do tonight. And they're, they're kind of basic shapes. And I know if I was gonna give a quiz and I was gonna ask you all which one you think's the easiest one to do, everybody's gonna go here. But in fact, the easiest one to do is here. Uh, so this shape here is called the tulip shape. And this is a common shape we get when we first are starting. This is like, ooh, the fancy shape we all make when we begin. And it's a great shape. I still love this shape and I always make these. So we'll do a tulip shape cup or mug. And then this is a inward sloping mug shape. And you can do these starting at the base and sloping up, or I did a little bit of an outward flare and then sloping in. And then this right here is a little bit fancier. It's more like a travel mug or a tankard shape. And so we'll do this after. So we'll do all three. I'm gonna be using a pound and a quarter of clay for these guys and a tiny bit more, a pound and a third for the tankard shape. But if you throw thin, you could get a pound and a quarter to do this right here. So we're gonna set this off to the side. Now, the space I'm working in right now, it is my temporary studio. Next year this time I won't be in this space, but this is where it is, so it's unfinished. I know it looks like I'm like hanging out in my mom's basement, but it's not, it's my studio. So. I've got some clay wedged up. I'm putting on my safety glasses so I don't get clay in my eyes. No, these are my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, what you'll need to have, you know, basic wheel throwing tools. I've got a little, little cloth here to wipe my hands off on because, you know, they're going to get messy. And um, some clay. So, yeah, I've got a few. I got eight, eight balls wedged up. If we have time, I'll make eight pieces. We'll see. What do you think I can do in an hour? I mean, I think that's what it comes down to. So, I'm gonna hook the folks up on Instagram because I know they're not gonna be able to see very well. So hold on. We'll get you in here, everybody. There you go. Now you're in. Is that better? Yeah? No? I don't know. It's gonna work. <laughs> all right, a pound and a quarter of clay, all wedged ready to go. Um, you notice how I have these stored off to the side here and I have them sitting on plastic, wrapped in plastic. I just don't want them to dry out. You know, if you plan to work for about an hour and you wedge up eight to 10 balls of clay, by the time you get to 40 minutes in, that clay will have started to dry on you. And that nice, soft, ready to work with clay is no longer nice and soft and ready to work with. So cover that up, cover it up, folks. All right. We're good to go. Uh, I'm throwing on my Bailey Pro XL wheel. I have had this wheel since 2004. I love it. It's great. Um, and I'll never buy probably another wheel, I don't think. I'll just keep buying Baileys. I love them. They did not give me this wheel. I bought it. Um, actually, I got a scholarship when I was in school and used my money to buy it, but that's another story. And then I'm using the Studio Pro Bat Saver System. Love these. It's a big bat with these little inserts. And Studio Pro Bats is going to be joining us for ClayshareCon. They're going to be giving away a couple of these. Well, I'm going to be demoing with 
their bats and they've donated some to give away. My apron are the, uh, you know, sometimes you have nights where you can't stand the apron and I'm there tonight. It's a sensory issue thing. We can talk about it another time. So let's talk a little bit about body posture when we're throwing. You know, you always want to sit correctly. You want to have your wheel at the correct height. I like to have my hips and the wheel head about at the same height. If you're throwing, standing up, it's a little different. You would just want to have it so it's comfortable with your arms at a 90 degree angle if you're standing up and throwing. But since we are sitting, it's a little different. You want to keep your back straight. Make sure you have your legs raised. So my wheel is up high. I have the leg extensions so that I sit higher. I have a higher stool and I have bricks under my feet so that my, you'll see my knees right here, they're there. And, and that's because if our legs are hanging down, it's putting a lot of strain on our low back. And by lifting them up, we relieve that strain on our back. Plus it puts us in a good position to have a nice straight back. Don't hunch over if you can help it, that can lead to back strain as well. And then you always want to think about T-Rex, right? In my intro to wheel throwing class, we talk a lot about posture. Get your elbows in, you know, the chicken, chicken dance, do, 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 do. Yeah, well, elbows in like a little T-Rex, right? And that helps to give you a really nice stable base when we're working. All right, so we got our clay on the wheel and I'm just smacking it on center to get it sort of there. See, my mom is here. Hey, mom. I'm, I am not in her basement. <laughs> and now um, I'm going to center. Now I have a So we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to compress. Differently, this is how I have learned to center. Some folks like to do this hand on each side and compress in and up. Make your little mound and then press back down. You know how my hands are touching and supporting each other? That's back to that stable base making it easier to throw. Another great tip is make sure your wheel is level. You can throw on a wheel that is not level, um, but you will find it'll be easier to get it centered if it is level. All right, so we're gonna start, and I think we'll start with tulip shape since that is the easiest shape to make out of the three we're gonna make. My clay is very soft, and I will tell you it's softer than it should be, and I will tell you why. All of my clay, a whole ton and a half of it, froze about two and a half weeks ago. So this was frozen and mush, and I've been wedging it all back to use. So um, my clay is soft. If you struggle with centering, you want to use softer clay. It just makes it, makes it so much easier to work with. If your clay is too hard, you notice I'm not really fighting the clay. The clay is just moving with my hands as I put pressure on it. If you're really struggling and fighting the clay, your clay is way too dry. So what can you do? Well, you can take your bag of clay, you can use a squirt gun with water, a spray gun with water, and spray some water in there to help it get softer, softer to begin with. All right, so I just found the center. I'm gonna press down and open up. So we're finding the bottom. And then I'm just gonna use my finger and I'm doing this on the inside to pull it out. And then compress this bottom going back in. And then I just peel that all out. And because I have this wheel that has a built-in, like it's a self-contained splash pan wheel unit, I just toss my chunks of clay all over in here. But sometimes I have a little bowl and I make it neat. Just depends. You threw three bowls yesterday. Woohoo! <laughs> so, there's a lot of shapes we can make when we're throwing. You know, there's so many things you can do, so many alterations that you can make when you're throwing. And these are just three basic ones, and, and we're just going to start there and we'll see what happens after that. 
All right, so let's go ahead and pull the side up. And so I'm just pinching and pulling. I am using my sponge. I'll take it away so you guys can see. My inside hand is higher than my outside, slightly. And I'm pressing in and pinching. And as I'm pulling up, you're thinking about there being a string hanging in the center right here, and you're going towards that string. If you pull up straight, it's gonna flare out on you. So always think about that string hanging here in the very center because you'll aim towards that. And that way your mug doesn't get away from you. So we're just gonna pull again to thin the wall. Now you can always make a straight sided mug, but many of you when you're starting out, it can be a challenge to get a straight sided mug, can't it? So you find when you have a new bag of clay, it's hard, you drop it on its side and flip it. Right, and so that's a really good technique. You drop your clay on the ground in the bag, mind you, and then you turn it and you do that on all the sides and that helps to shock the clay, loosen up the um, plates that make clay up, that, make, that clay is made up of. Many of you may not know clay is actually made up of a whole bunch of particles that are laying on each other, little flat particles, and they get locked in. But when you drop it, you kind of loosen them up and that helps the clay be softer. All right, so got a, got a pretty good cylinder going here. And I'm just going to start pressing outward with my inside hand and just following along with my outside hand, just reining it in a bit. And then now, about a little over a third the way up, I'm going to start pressing slightly inward and then flaring back out two thirds the way up. So we're using the, the rule of thirds, right? So it's a pretty basic, like many of you have probably made this shape right here. We're going to add a little more volume to it. Yes, this is a pound and a quarter of clay. Those of you who are asking, I did say it at the beginning, but Oh, I'll put it out again and I'm sure I'll be asked lots. Now I'm going to switch to using my rib. You don't have to throw with ribs, but if you're using a porcelainous clay, ribs can be really helpful. They help scrape the water and slip off the surface that's sitting there. And when all that's sitting on the surface, it makes the clay softer and it makes it collapse sooner. So you can get more working time if you use a rib to scrape all of that slip off the surface. And I am guilty of having a lead foot. I go way fast, so let me slow my wheel down a little bit. And I want this one here. All right, so I'm just using the rib and pressing from the inside out slightly, pulling up. The rib's just gliding along. I'm right here on the inside. And now I'm going to take the rib, turn it around, and use the curved side and just press in. And let the clay follow the rib and it just kind of flows. Then bend it over the top like that. Now, often when I throw, I'll use a Cheryl mud tool. I like to use the red ones for B mix or porcelain. I didn't want to grab it tonight because I wanted to try to stick with the basic tools you guys are going to have in the basic toolkit. And these wooden ribs, you get one in the basic pottery toolkit. So I decided to stick with that. So this is the tulip shape. We have the, the flower coming up, going in, and then flaring outward. And you can modify this by flaring it out a little more if you want to. Now, if this is going to be a mug, you know, this is a good shape because you have a lot of volume in the, in the bottom and middle, and then it goes inward and flares back out. Well, the inward will keep the heat in, right? So all of the hot liquid will be down here. So it'll be a nice mug to drink from because we have that outward flaring lip and it'll keep our tea or coffee or cocoa nice and warm. All right, let's compress the room. So when I first started throwing, I used a chamois and we kept them in film canisters. And there might be people watching that have no idea what a film canister is. I'm gonna get a little, get a little tea. I've had a little bit of a um, tickle in my throat all day. 
again, I'm hoping not to lose my voice, but it's trying, so we'll see. So I'm going to use, Kev, will you give me a cough drop? I'm going to use the webbing between my fingers, and I'm just going to wrap that around, <clears throat> sorry, the rim, and that compresses it. So when I first was starting out, we used chamois, and we used film can canisters to hold them. But now I just use my fingers. And I think I'm going to throw one without talking <coughs> to rest my voice, just like this. So just watch. So we'll take this one off the wheel, and we'll make another one almost just like it. And I'll let my voice rest, and you can just watch. I've done a ton of talking today. I've been on the phone. Uh, talking with folks about clay share con and all kinds of stuff. So here's our shape. Look at that. It's a little taller than if I was making a vase because I know I'm going to make it into a mug. So I was thinking about that when I made it. Let's put that off to the side. I know film canisters. People might not know what a film canister is. Um, you could use a bobber. A fishing bobber? <laughs> I don't like Ricola that much, so what else do you got there? What you got there? He's got a whole handful. A Ludens, sure, I'll have that. We got, oh, it's, is it cherry? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I'll totally take that. Yeah, leave the others there. I'll come back for those later. <laughs> hey, Miracle. Yeah, I still have the recipe for the tea you gave me. I know. You know, when I talk a lot, I lose my voice because you, you can't talk like 12 hours a day and it stay, but. Oh, Lisa, I'm excited. You got your new kiln. How tall and wide do I throw a mug? Karen, it completely depends on the shape. It, there's no, for me, there's no set size. I'll measure this for you if you want. This is four and a half right now, and the rim is three and three quarters from end to end. But <laughs> it depends, you know, I think it depends what you want to do with the mug. I, I mean, here's a finished mug of mine. I like them kind of big. I like a big cup of tea. I don't drink a lot of coffee. Uh, I do drink a lot of tea. And when I drink tea, I tend to want a big cup. It's just kind of how I roll. So I saw, oh, the cool air in my studio might be hard, must be hard in my throat. I think so, and our heat is a pellet stove, so it's dry in here, really dry. All right, so I had saw a question about beginners. A, a guide for wheels. I did do a blog post on, on, uh, was that on clayshare.com, Kev? The blog? Um, That's on clayshareresources.com. So, about buying a wheel, and my first wheel was one just like this that I purchased, and I have never regretted it. I loved it so much, I bought a second one a couple years later. And those are my two wheels that I use. One for 18 years, the other for 14, 15 now. So this is a little more clay. Oh, this is my clay I'm supposed to do the tankard with. Well, we'll do a big flower.
I see a lot of tea folks on here too. The coffee's good. Don't get, the, I like coffee sometimes. Um, so we're opening this up, going down. So I don't check my depth anymore, but when you're starting out, if you're worried that the bottoms are too thick or too thin, which is a very real thing to be concerned with, you can always take a needle tool, get it a little slippy when the wheel's not turning, stick it in, pull it out, and the clean area is how thick the bottom is. And we do that in my intro to wheel throwing class. We'll talk about that. But I like my bottoms a little thicker than a quarter of an inch because I'm gonna trim them. And I like to have a nice foot on there. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna pull up. Remember that string in the center. And I have to remind myself to slow down. So this one will be bigger because we use more clay. One key to getting consistent shapes and sizes is to use the same weight of clay every time. but this was my, my tankard ball of clay. It's all right. Should we make the tankard? I mean, why not? Let's do it. Okay. So it doesn't matter that I didn't say I'm making a tankard when I was starting. We just pulled up and made a cylinder, right? That's what we're doing. And I'm a wet thrower, always have been. If you are too, don't let other people tell you you're using too much water. If it works for you, then just keep going with it. All right, so we're thinning this down. Compress our rim. Now, this is gonna be the tankard. So we kind of made that flower shape, right? Before we go, I'll, before we go ahead and make the shape, I'm going to talk you through it. So we're going to pull up, and as I'm pulling up on the inside, I'm going to press out a little bit, and we're just going to press out, and then we're going to round it over, flow back in, but we're going to come in with the rib, and we're going to do more of a straight-sided piece, come to a narrow neck, and then flare it out, and then go straight up. That made sense, right? So we're gonna press out, gently with my fingers on the inside. You see the little belly forming? Then we're gonna pull up, 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 but we're just following along. See? And let's use the back of this rib to help call her in a little bit. So I want more of a neck on this than I had. So we're going to collar it in. So you just compress, collar in, pull up. So when you collar in, what it does is not only is it making the circumference of your clay smaller, it's making it thicker because it's compressing all that clay together. So if you find your rims are getting too thin and getting away from you, compress them in, collar them in, and that'll help you a bit. Just taking the water out of the bottom. Or you could have kept, I could have kept this narrow the whole time, and if I had done that, I wouldn't have had to collar in so much. We've got to do some shaping here. Got to slow myself down too. I go, I go fast. I tell you, I need, I need a regulator on my wheel pedal. And I'm letting the rib, the back corner of the rib here, 
press in just a bit to give me this shape, just like that. I'm going to flare it out a little more. Turn this around and then we're just going to finish the top. And I like to just press this, just press it against the rib. That's it. This would be a great vase shape. And now I've got a little bit of clay down at the bottom I want to clean up. I'm just going to use my wooden knife. And just go down in and This is sometimes called trimming on the wheel. You trim it before you trim it, pre-trimming. And so we have this shape here. Let's get our rim compressed. So that's basically done. Tankard shape. Uh, great vase shape too, and this isn't the. This is how I, I like to make tankards. It is not the end all be all in tankards. There's tons of other shapes out there. I don't think there's a right shape or a wrong. And we'll trim the bottom. Let's go ahead and measure it up so you guys get to know. So it's about a pound and a third of clay, is what I believe I had there, and we are at five inches tall. So it's not much taller than a mug, but it's a little bit taller. And my rim this might be a little smaller than the mug. Let's find out. Three and a half. Yeah, just a tiny bit smaller. So five inches tall, three and a half. But you know what? This could be a nice big mug. Could have kept coloring in if you wanted more of a neck in here. You wanted that. Oh, put this over here. Let's do another. You like big tea mugs. <laughs> Who doesn't? You know, the great thing about big mugs for like cocoa and things like that is you have more room for whipped cream. Uh huh. That's how that goes. All right, so I had a little leftover clay on here from the last time I used these, and I was using a groggy clay. I'm just going to scrape that off. Normally, when I'm using a groggy clay, I will scrub down the bats before I switch to something like a B mix. That's a non groggy, but it's fine. If a piece of grog gets in the B mix, it will not end my world. I promise. It'll be all right. All right, we're going to do the, uh, this one. Let me grab it. This is one of the more difficult ones, believe it or not. And that's what we're going to do right now. It's the side sloping one. I think I'm going to, there. And again, you only need about a pound and a quarter of clay. But if you use more than that, you're just making bigger mugs. That's all. It doesn't, it, it's not that big of a deal. So if you like big mugs, or if you have a clay that shrinks a lot. Now, B-Mix shrinks about, what, 11%, I think is where we're at with B-Mix. So, you know, you've got to make it about an inch bigger than you want it. Tenth of an inch. Ten tenths. <laughs> so how long do I let them dry before adding the handle? These will be, they will sit overnight covered gently. And then tomorrow I'll trim them all and I will handle them all. If I was not, if I was throwing these in the morning, you might be able to handle them by the evening. But you don't want them to dry really fast because drying fast often means drying unevenly. And then you end up with warping issues or cracking issues. But you want them to be wet enough so that your handle will join without cracking, but not so dry that the handle cracks when you join it. I know, that's... 
And so I see another person asking about the clay softness. Um, I did talk about that already once, but we can talk about it again. There's no perfect softness, there's only what works for you. I like my clay a little on the softer side. I'm actually going to do what's called, so when people cone up and down a lot, it's also called wedging on the wheel. And I'll do that a lot when I feel an air bubble in there, it'll help work that out. But you can see, my clay is fairly soft. Don't let anybody tell you you have to use really dry clay. Don't use hard clay. All right, we're gonna make that upward sloping mug. And I have my little cake, right? Sometimes we call it a beehive. And we find our center with our thumb, and I'm just gonna press down. And then pull backwards, just pulling straight back. That's this motion right here. And this is one of the pieces that you'll have a little bigger of a bottom, which is nice because it's a mug shape that's less likely to tip over. So if you have cats in your house and they like to knock your cups and mugs over, it always comes back to cats, everyone. Just gonna tell you, it always does. If you have cats in your house, they like to knock your stuff over, you know, this, this could help prevent it from actually getting sloshed over. The timing is the part of handles that you struggle with. It is all about timing. Try, try right after you trim, add the handle, like immediately after. That's how I do it. Do I use a cutout template to throw the same shape nugs? Nope, I just keep throwing until I get the same shape every time, and often I do, because I've made thousands, uh, tens of thousands of mugs. I don't know how many in 20 odd years I've made, but um, I will say a cutout template is a great way to get the exact shape every time, especially if you're starting out. I learned from uh, <laughs> a potter who you just kept making until you got the same shape a hundred times in a row, exactly. No measuring, you weren't allowed. You just threw um, by eye. So I'm, uh, I, I got pretty good at that. But I don't encourage people to do that. That's very frustrating. So yeah, you know, a cutout template can be great. There's also a lot of other guides that you can use. All right, remember our string? We're pulling up towards our string. You don't wanna lose sight of that string. You're making like a little volcano, right? So will I make my handles tonight or tomorrow? I will make them tomorrow, Patricia, when I first come to the studio. As soon as I step out into the studio, I will pull handles. I will sit them aside for about 20 minutes. While they are sitting to the side, I'll be trimming my mugs. As I trim each mug, I'll cover it back up. And once they're all trimmed, which will take about 30 minutes, I then put the handles on. All right, let's go ahead and pull up, keeping our slant. Did y'all know my clay was off-centered when I started? I don't know if anybody noticed. I was kind of keeping it quiet. But now, you can tell. I'm gonna throw another in a sec, because this one is, it'll be fine. But I'm picky. Okay, so compress our rim. Right? And you have this really nice angled shape. All this gets trimmed away down there. That's all excess clay. Let me get the water out of the inside. Is there a template for the one I'm making now? Uh, no, I just throw it. I don't have templates for wheel thrown pieces at all. I've never made them. I think they are great if you want to use them. Um, I always meant to try it, but I never have. I make templates for, wheel, for hand building all the time though. So um, you could just draw the shape. So you know how to make a template, everyone. You know how to make templates from wheel thrown pieces? You draw half a shape. You don't draw the whole thing. You will draw half. So you'll draw straight and then an angle in 
and that's it. And then you'll cut it out at the halfway point, right? So you'll be about here. And so you'll have this line and then an angle in, and that'll be it. You don't actually have to draw the whole mug. You only want half because you want the profile. All right, so I'm using my wooden knife to get a lot of that clay away now. But look at the shape we have. This is another one of those simple mugs that has the smaller mouth, which keeps the contents warmer longer. Right there. Isn't that cute little thing? It's like a little volcano. And it was off center, but I was able to pull it back in. Pull this one off, we'll do another one. You could make a profile rib. You could exactly make a rib. Well, that's kind of what I did with this. Um, when I angled it against it, right? I held it against it. If we look at this piece, when we look at this rib, I held the rib like this against it. And that is what made the shape. It's this line. It's this exact line right there. Look, it matches perfectly. There's not a gap because it's where the rib touched it. And so that is what I used to make it. Let me just clean that off. Okay, so we got this little guy over here. We're gonna have to put this one over there. All right, so those are the three main shapes I was gonna do, but now that means we can do whatever we want or make more of those. It's entirely up to you. What happens if you don't take out the excess water in the mug? So that water will sit in there and you will get S cracks because that part of the clay will be the wettest and cracks happen at points of least resistance and wet areas have less resistance than drier areas. So this one, so some of these inserts are from the old Wonder Bat system. Some of you remember that and they don't fit as well as my Studio Pro Bat inserts. They do work and some of those Wonder Bat uh, inserts are not the same size. They all have a little variance. So that one was a little wiggly. So I switched it. But uh, yeah, so that's how you get S cracks. You know, compressing the bottoms is a good practice to do, but a lot of times S cracks happen when your clay is left too wet on the inside. It can also happen if they dry too fast because the outside of the piece, let's just talk, grab, a, let's grab one and talk about it for a sec then. The outside is drying faster than the inside. And what happens is as these walls dry, they're gonna shrink and start to pull and the wet clay on the inside is gonna give. And the reason it doesn't S is cause it's, we threw it and it's the spinning coming out. And so you get a curve there and you get a curve there cause that's unspinning. So it's actually going that way, but that's what's happening. So when you leave wet down inside your cup, you're just asking for S cracks or inside your bowl or inside your vase or anything you're making, you don't wanna leave standing water in there. Just as a practice, it's a good idea not to do that. Oh, thanks, John. <laughs> I see some great suggestions for reconstituting a whole bag of clay, yeah. Um, I like the bucket method. I saw a lot of folks chiming in. I'll take my bag of clay, put it in a bucket of water, not so far down that it goes inside the top, but you know, right even with the top. And I will take half a cup of water and pour it directly in that bag before and close it up. And that's what I'll do with, uh, with it. And you wait, wait, it, wait for a few days and then you check it and you see if it's softened up and just keep doing that over and over. So a question about, um, air bubble. So usually the coning up and down will actually bring the air bubble to the surface and it comes out. Yeah. And that's not a class on it because it's something you just, it's, it's, it would be a two minute thing. There's wedging, the wedging class is part of the intro to wheel throwing. So if you want to wedge your clay. So this is a little more, this is about a pound and a third of clay. So it's a little more than we had for the last piece, but it's what I used for the tankard. So we're just coning up. Cone up and then back down. 
Oh, there's a great question. How do I empty the water in my wheel? So there's a, actually a drain hole in the front. You guys can't see it. But there's a hole right there and there's a bucket under it and all the water just goes right down. And you know what? All this stuff, you just scrape it down and it goes down the hole. And then you just take that bucket and you put it in your reclaim and you use it for mixing up new clay. Yeah, it, it's, I love it. It's so easy to clean. I have done videos on my Instagram showing me clean this in just a few minutes because you take your sponge and a rib and you just scrape, scrape, scrape everything down the hole, wipe it down, down the hole. No splash pan to remove. I, I learned on Lockerbie kick wheels. I hated having to clean the wheels. I've also thrown on Brent's and Clay Boss and Shimpo's and I really don't like cleaning the splash pan. So when I went to get my first wheel, I wanted one that has the big, like the wheel is the splash pan. And I know there's a few other companies that make them like that, but I went with Bailey cause I, I'd never used one. I bought this wheel brand new unused, never tried one before. I just bought it and no regrets. When did I wire off? Believe it or not, I did wire off. Um, but I think I did it when I was talking. <laughs> All right, what are we gonna make on this one? So they have Bailey removable now. Bailey does have wheels that you can remove the splash pan, um, but they still make this one here that does not have a splash pan, but you can get either or. Yes, you can. All right, what are we making? Make a Jessica mug. Oh, one of my own mugs. I don't know if I know how to make those. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Do your best. Yeah, that's that's my uh, make one of those. So we'll compress the bottom. Oh, gosh. So I wanted to make a bunch of mugs because as many of you know, I have two brand new glazes coming out with Clayscapes Pottery. They have four new glazes. Two of them are mine, my black copper and my nutmeg. And my nutmeg is a chino. My black copper is a metallic copper. And those are coming out pretty darn soon. And I need a bunch of pots to glaze because I got to show you guys all the awesome things you can do with them. So. I need to make some mugs. And for me, although I'm a hand builder, most of the people don't realize that. I didn't start hand building till I'd been making pottery for over a decade. I worked as a production potter, as a wheel thrower for my own studio for many years. And so all I did day in and day out was throw pots, hundreds of pots a week, maybe more, I don't know. And so I threw uh, exclusively, I did not hand build at all until 2010, 2010 maybe? Yeah, I think I started hand building then. But until then, I only wheel through. That's it. There was nothing else for me. I didn't even want to try hand building. I did sculpture I'd, in school and I, you know, done some tile work, but I didn't make pots from hand building because guess what? It's hard to get a pot to look good that's hand built. It's harder to hand build than to throw. And anybody who says it's not, I'd like to see him do both. It's hard to hand build and get a really good pot. So um, I had a learning curve as we all do with everything. And I, well, I had an injury which kind of made me have to hand build. I couldn't throw for goodness, four months or so. So I had to make pots or else I would go crazy. And also it was my job. I had to make a living. So I started hand building and I practiced like crazy until I got good. All right, let's shape this. You love throwing, but hate cleaning the wheel. Oh, I hate cleaning the wheel too. That's why I have this wheel because it's easy to clean. Um, this bat system, Tina, is made by Studio Pro Bats right here in Vermont. It's still being made today. They are actually going to be a sponsor for ClayshareCon, and they're going to be giving away two of their bat systems. So we're going to give two of these away. 
in just a few weeks. All right, so this is like my Jessica shape mug. Um, I'm just going to start with a nice full round belly on here. Big bellies. I like a big belly on my mug. Could be a song. I like big bellies. It's too bad nobody's come up with anything like that. All right, and then I'm just coming in to make the shoulder. Turn the rib around. So this is a elongated tulip, right? It's kind of what we got going here. And you can stop here if you want to. But I like to do a little something different. Can I throw a mug, put texture on, and belly it out? I don't know if I have any texture tools nearby. So I am making this little decorative element. If I, ah, uh, we'll have to do that in a separate video. I do not have texture tools here readily available. I'm sorry. So if your shoulder goes flat, I'm just pressing that out a little more. A little more volume in there. And then give this a little inward curve. And then flare it back out. Compress our rim. Looking pretty good. I think I teach this shape in one of my classes. And then we'll clean up the bottom. Not unhappy. If I had my Cheryl mud tool, I'd get a much smoother side like seamless side. Let's see if we can do it. There we go. That'll be good. That'll do. You got a Bailey Pro XL assembly looks tricky. It's not Lisa. It's not. I put mine together. Um, it was not. It wasn't hard. And I think, does Bailey have some videos on it? They should. All right, let's go in and make sure there's no standing water down on the inside. Could I do tile making? Well, not tonight, my dear, but yeah, we could do some tiles. We have, have we done tiles? Gosh, I don't even know if we've actually, we haven't. Um, we do a lot of slab. Have we not done tiles? I, I've done test tiles, flat tiles. Gosh, I want to say I thought we did tiles. Maybe we didn't. I do make tiles, and I can't imagine I hadn't done it, but maybe I haven't. All right, so I wired that off kind of quickly. And then here it is. So that's a nice, nice mug shape. Mug. It's a good size one, too. It's a nice big one. Um... Uh, this will hold 14 ounces easily when it's all said and done. So if you like big mugs, there you go. I think we have time we can do one more before I got to go get ready for the next broadcast. Use rubber stamps. Yes, there's a, so many things you can do for decorating the surface. And um, it was a brand new. It's a brand new. Oh, it's just clean. I'm like, oh, wait, I don't actually have any new ones. <laughs> but it's clean, and that always throws me off. The just shape, yeah. So your bellies don't come out as even as mine. What do I do inside the belly to get it even all the way around? So, Nancy, you're moving your hand up um, at the same speed as your wheel's going, right? And you just do a nice, even, smooth motion. Um, let's make another mug. We'll make another mug. And uh, we can put it, we'll do a different shape, a slightly different shape, but we'll still put a, I'll put a belly on it if you want. Jessica mugs in at the base and out above the base. Well, 
Well, it will go in more once I trim it. It's not done. It's got to be trimmed. That second part happens after the... That's often how I make my cups. It's in, out, in for a tumbler. Oh, I know what shape you're... <laughs> Laura thinks there's a video on tiles. I... I thought I, t I don't know. A manly mug. I'll do a manly mug. All right. Y yeah, Kevin wants a manly mug because he's going to try to steal it. Um, so men, most men like not frilly, foo-foo-y mugs or really curvy shapes. They like more straight up and down shapes. Um, you know, this is just when we think about design principle and everything and and more organic curvilinear shapes appeal to women and men like more geometric or straight sided shapes that's just like how it is right you know there's a lot of theories about why that is if you look at women's bodies and men's bodies men's bodies tend to be more angular and women have more of the curves right so there's a theory this is just theories they're not necessarily mine but they've been put out there um, you know, why people like what they like. Big manly mug. So when I was first throwing, I was fascinated by this mug that I had that was smaller at the bottom and wider at the top. And I struggled for months to get that shape. And it flares out. And it was a really great shape. I don't know if I would consider it a manly shape though. I was really interested in it. So it makes me think it might not be because I'm not a man, but I don't know. What's the definition of a manly good mug? I don't, I don't have a definition of a manly mug. Um, like a diner mug? Yes. I think that's what I think of. Like, Kevin loves these straight-sided, chunky, diner-esque mugs very much. Um, and both my daughters and I like these full-belly, rounded, tummy mugs. So, who knows? I seemed like I was going to install the tiles in my kitchen in the other house. Yeah, I thought so. And I made the tiles. We must have done tiles. It might have been just a uh, prime time, right? Gotta slow down. You see me almost catch it? Don't have a lead foot. All right. Manly mug shape. This is my interpretation of a manly mug shape. So. Not sure it will actually be a manly mug shape. Some guys could be watching. You, all you manly men out there watching can grade me on my manly mug shape. I mean, I think if I ask my husband what's a manly mug, he'll say one that holds a lot of coffee and a beer. Right? Can, at the same time. <laughs> at the same time, right. <laughs> Speed kills. Joy is so right. Joy, you can't go too fast. All right, so the apron of clay I get down here is something that, oh my gosh, all my career, always. I don't know if it's because I have small hands, but I always have a tiny little chunk of clay down there. I'm always cleaning that up. But in this case, we're going to use it to our advantage. So a manly mug. I'm thinking sort of a tankard. No, oh, see, I keep going back to my just shape, my shapes that I always make. 
I'm kind of thinking you can leave the handle off that and I can be Gandalf drinking ale. <laughs> mm -hmm. All the cameras? Nope. <laughs> Kevin lost camera too. That's only the main camera that we're all filming, we're using. You have to come, do I need to hit on again? <laughs> hate it when it happens. What time is it? Oh, it's the camera telling me I should be done. All right. And then the bottom, I'm just going to press in. I don't know where I'm going with this. This is just goofing off. That is not well. I mean, <laughs> that's it. So this is the part that makes pottery fun. Because you just, I don't know, I'm going to put a lot of bumps in this one. It's weird. I see this in a matte black glaze. Maybe with a little uh, mica in it or something. You know, something with a little... But this is no longer, I don't know if I'd make that a mug. But I can tell you, this is a bit masculine. All right, we're going to take the excess off here. Okay, that's kind of cool. Totally not my quote unquote style, but very fun. We'll clean this up down here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Guys watching. Is that is that a guy mug? That's a big it's well it's gonna shrink 10%, 11% actually. So it won't be as big as you think. Um, and I have very small hands, so I make everything look gigantic. I saw there was a comment on one of my Instagram posts that you know, for a while they thought I was making crazy huge pots and then they realized that I was the size of a hobbit. So it makes sense now. And they're not wrong. I'm a little taller than a hobbit. I would be a tall hobbit. The only time I'd ever be tall. Oh, please don't, if you all were trying to keep up, please don't get frustrated. It's, um, it's very hard to throw when someone else is throwing unless you can pause it. I think this is fun. You could put a nice handle on this. Let's let's go ahead and are you on camera two over here? Okay, and I'll hold it up for everybody to see. Can I show the other rib that I mentioned? Um, if Kev will grab it from my tools, it's the red rib, the red, um, and I'll have him show it. What do you think of that? handle on this get a chunky handle Instagram folks and look if you didn't want to put a handle on it it has these grippers already built in so that you can just grab on and my hand looks like tiny compared to it because my hand is tiny so uh, there's there's no falsehood there um, so I use the same weight to do a low wide soup bowl probably about a one and a third or one and a third pound yeah Tallest of the little people. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, that's fun. This will be great to put some black copper. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And maybe lake blue. I don't know. We'll put, put some. Hey, Kev, will you grab my red rib for me? Yeah, let me bring you to camera Yeah, he's going to bring me to camera one. Turned out uh, ice cream soda cup. Mmm. Swirl cup. Um... Miranda, I've made swirl cups many years ago, probably 20 years ago. <laughs> um, so um, I haven't seen that person's exact mug, but I um, two decades ago made a ton of that kind of pieces. Um, this, uh, though, one like this, although the it's the one that's curved on both sides. It should be in there. So this is the number... 
Um, doo -doo, I can't read it. Four, but I think it's the number three. That. But this one's good. It's little. It is little. It's little. But look, it's super flexy. Now you can use a yellow rib too. Th these shapes in the yellow, the red is really bendy. And for B mix, this one is my favorite for throwing with. For B mix, I like the red. Um, the yellows are good if you have more of a stoneware clay, you know, something like that. Wiggle, 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 plus, you know, fan yourself. So anyhow, we have this uh, ginormous mug. Um, we'll see where it goes from here, right? Oh, the copper glaze is going to be so fun. The, the grabber, the grabber mug, right? And this would be great. A bumpy handle, something that has a little uh, grip to it that mimics the shape would be nice here. Yeah, we could do a lot with that. So we did uh, one, two, three, four. We made four. One, two, three, four, five. We made five mugs, which is great because I've got more to throw. And we're going to be back at 615 for prime time. For premium members, we're going to be making heart bowls. They're, I threw these this morning. They're not quite ready to trim, I think what I'm going to end up doing is covering them with plastic, and then tomorrow morning I'll trim them. How tall would I throw a stemless wine cup or a whiskey cup? I would use a pound of clay. I have done uh, wheel thrown wine cups, and I do have a whiskey cup class. It's true. Um, it's a different shape than than I think what you're asking. You're asking for more of a, a wine stemless wine cup. I'd use a pound of clay, and I would throw it about throw. I don't know, three and a half, four inches tall because it's going to shrink, so maybe four inches. Um, you want the height and you want it to angle in. I mean, it's kind of, it's a version. Let me see if I can get this guy out because it's stuck in here with all the other pots. Um, it's very similar to this, except it's going to have rounded sides, right? And I uh, think you just belly it a little more and you would get it. And did I give the height for this one? See, I don't know if I did. I think I did. This one is do, 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 one, two, three, four inches tall. Yeah, so I do it about four inches tall because I think that height is good. It's going to shrink. So four is a good start. Most guys buy tall mugs and with a belly base, slightly curved outward bend at the top. So, yeah, so it would be like sort of that with the big belly, the big chunker. That's kind of like tea time, but okie dokie everyone. Well, there we have it. Wheel throwing uh, more than three shapes. It was pretty fun. We did like five shapes, I think tonight. And next we're gonna make some bowls. So I'll see you guys next week. We are going to do glazing. That's right, we're glazing next week. So come join the fun and I'll see you all then. Bye everybody.